Now in this video we're going to go over the E2 reaction mechanism. So let's start with this example. Let's say we have 2 bromobutane and let's react with a strong base. Methoxide dissolve in methanol. So what is the major product for this reaction? Now the strong base can either go for this hydrogen, the primary blue hydrogen, or it can go for the secondary green hydrogen. Now methoxide can grab both hydrogens. So let's say if it goes for the blue hydrogen, we are going to get a double bond on a primary carbon. The E2 reaction, it's a concerted reaction mechanism. It all happens in one step and so there are no carbocation rearrangements. For the E2 reaction, the rate depends on the concentration of the substrate and the concentration of the base. So it's first order with respect to the substrate, first order with respect to the base, but it's second order overall. So if you double the concentration of the substrate and triple the concentration of the base, the rate will increase by a factor of 6. 2 times 3 is 6. If you quadruple the concentration of the substrate and increase the concentration of the base by a factor of 5, the rate will increase by a factor of 20. Now, if methoxide goes for the green hydrogen, we're going to get 2 butene as opposed to 1 butene. So once it acts as a base, grabbing the hydrogen, the carbon hydrogen bond will break. Those electrons will be used to form the pi bond thus expel in the leaving group. And so we can get trans 2 butene. Now there's two green hydrogens here. So one of them will lead to the trans isomer and the other one will lead to the cis isomer. And so we get a mixture of products. However, we're going to get the Zaitsev product, which is the most stable alkene. Trans disubstitute alkenes are more stable than cis disubstitute alkenes. So this one's going to be the major product. This is a monosubstituted alkene. It has one R group attached to the carbon-carbon double bonds. And this one is a disubstituted alkene. It has two R groups. A disubstituted alkene is more stable than a monosubstituted terminal alkene. Now let's work on some other examples. So here we have a secondary alkyl halide. And let's use another strong base, sodium ethoxide dissolved in ethanol. Whenever you see ET, ET stands for ethyl. So that's CH3CH2. Now, sodium ethoxide, it's going to go for the blue hydrogen as opposed to, let's call this the yellow hydrogen. When you use a strong base that is not sterically hindered, like ethoxide or methoxide, it's going to go for the hydrogen that leads to the Zaitsev product, that is the most stable alkene. So it's going to go for the blue hydrogen, forming a carbon-carbon bond, a carbon-carbon double bond rather, kicking out the leaving group. And so this is going to be the major product. And this is called the Zaitsev product. Now, if it goes for the yellow hydrogen, it's going to give us the minor product. And the minor product is known as the Hoffman product. So this is going to be the major product in this reaction. Now, let's start with the same substrate in this case, 2-bromo-3-methyl-butane. And this time, we're going to react it with a bulky base, a base that is sterically hindered, terp-butoxide, dissolve in terbutanol. So what's going to happen if we use this base? Is it going to go for the blue hydrogen or for the yellow hydrogen? Now keep in mind, there's three of these yellow hydrogen atoms. 
but there's only one blue hydrogen atom. Because terpetoxide is so bulky, and because this is a tertiary carbon, it's going to have a hard time trying to abstract that proton because it's surrounded by these bulky methyl groups. And terpetoxide itself is also bulky, so it's going to be hard to get that hydrogen that it wants to get. Therefore, due to steric factors, terpetoxide will prefer to abstract a more accessible proton. In this case, it will preferentially go for the yellow hydrogen as opposed to the blue hydrogen. The yellow hydrogen is on a primary carbon, and so it's more accessible than the blue hydrogen. So terpetoxide will favor the Hoffman product over the Zeta product in this case, if this hydrogen is sterically hindered due to the methyl groups on it. If it's not, then terpetoxide can go for any of those hydrogens. But since the blue hydrogen is basically sterically hindered by the methyl groups, it's going to be hard for it to go there. And so this is going to be the major product in this case, the Hoffman product. Now here's a question for you. What are the major products for these two reactions? Let's use sodium methoxide and methanol and also an alkyl fluoride with the same reagents. So draw the major product for each of these two reactions. For the first example, we have an E2 reaction. We have a strong base and a secondary alkyl halide. Strong bases favor E2 reactions over E1 reactions. And for an E2 reaction, no rearrangements can occur. So therefore, we could form the double bond only on the left side or on the right side. And using 2-bromopentane, the double bond will be formed on the left side. So that's going to be the major product. And then this is the minor product, but we're not going to worry about that. Now, when using an alkyl fluoride, we're going to get the Hoffman product as the major product, as opposed to the Zeta product. Now, you might be wondering why. For one reason, the bromine atom is a good leaving group, whereas the fluorine atom is a bad leaving group. And so bad leaving groups, they tend to favor the formation of the Hoffman product, whereas a good leaving group tends to favor the formation of a Zeta product. Because bromine is a good leaving group, when this reaction occurs, the transition state will resemble more like an alkene than something else. Because the transition state resembles an alkene, the most stable alkene is the one that's going to form. And that's how we get the Zeta product. Now, when dealing with the bad leaving group, let me get rid of this. When a base comes in to remove the hydrogen, this leaving group doesn't want to leave. And so it's pretty slow in leaving that substrate. As a result, there's going to be a buildup of negative charge. And so the transition state resembles more like a carb anion rather than an alkene. And so we need to think of the stability of a carb anion. For carbocations, we know that tertiary carbocations are more stable than secondary ones, and so forth. But for a carb anion, the reverse is true. Primary carb anions are more stable than secondary ones, which are more stable than tertiary carb anions. So therefore, the base wants to abstract this hydrogen better because it will lead to a more stable carb anion-like transition state. A primary carb anion is better than a tertiary one. So that's why it's better to form the double bond next to the primary carbon as opposed to the secondary carbon. So remember that alkyl fluorides prefer to form the Hoffman elimination product since fluorine is a poor leaving group and the transition state resembles more like a carb anion rather than an alkene. And primary carb anions are more stable than secondary or tertiary carb anions. Now, if you have a good leaving group like bromine, 
chlorine or iodine, then you're going to get the Zaitsev elimination product as the major product, since the transition state resembles more like an alkene rather than a carbanion. And so the most stable alkene will be the dominant product in that reaction. Now let's say if we have an alkyl bromide, but there's a double bond already present. What is going to be the major product of this reaction if we react it with methoxide dissolved in methanol? So methoxide is a strong base. Therefore, this is going to favor the E2 reaction for a secondary alkyl halide. Now, there's two hydrogen atoms that we can remove, the blue hydrogen atom or the red hydrogen atom. So which one will the base go for? If methoxide goes for the blue hydrogen atom, the double bond will form on the left side of the bromine atom. And if it goes for the red hydrogen atom, the double bond will form on the right side. And so this is an isolated diene. It's a diene because there are two double bonds. And on the left, we have a conjugated diene. You need to know that conjugated dienes are more stable than isolated dienes due to resonance. So anytime you have a double bond and a single bond and a double bond, you have a conjugated system. And so these alkenes are more stable. Therefore, this is going to be the major product. OK, that is a terrible looking A. Let's do that again. And here, this is the minor product. So to draw the mechanism, the base is going to go for the hydrogen. The carbon-hydrogen bond will break, and the leaving group will leave. And that's all we need to do to show the mechanism for the formation of that product. So that's it for this video. Thanks for watching.